from Anchored in Faith Gospel Church in Oxford, Iowa. This is Anchored in Faith. We are in Romans, the 8th chapter, and I will start around verse 6 to read down until I get to the main points of what I want to go into. And we will also go over into Galatians, the 5th chapter. We will talk about today about being motivated by the Spirit of God. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Name our subject, our title will be for this January the 5th, 2014, is get a revelation, not a resolution. <laughs> get a revelation, Amen. not a resolution. A revelation is a revealing from God himself to you in your spirit. Amen. Revealing to you the truth of what you need to do in your life right now. Praise God. A revelation can come from different sources. God is our source. God can come any way he wants to reveal to you the truth of what he wants you to live and how he wants you to live a Christian life. Amen. And resolution is your own intentions. What have you thought about doing of your own will, not of the will of the Father, which is in heaven. Amen. I am inspired this year in the year of 2014 to not to let down in any way to compromise, not to let my gods down. But to stand up with the word of God and to be inspired to speak the word of God, not only in the four walls, but out in the neighborhood, out in my environment, and in my home, and in my uh, neighborhood. How many of you are willing to go out and say what God says? That's what we need to go by, what the word of God says. Let's read over to Romans, the eighth chapter. Praise God. Starting at verse 12. I mean, number six. Read verse six. For to be carnal minded is death, uh -huh. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, or, in, or enemy to God. For it is not uh, subject to the law or the word of God, neither indeed can be. They cannot work together because they are opposite. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. They have two conditions here. So if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, and that's a good thing. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If a man, whoever is that a man, woman, boy, girl, don't have Jesus in him, he is not of God. Amen. Not a child of the king. And that's what we are looking for. How many of your true believers are looking for that time? To meet the king who died for your sin. Amen. Praise God. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he have none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. You become to be dead to sin when Christ abides in you. You don't want to do those things that you used to do. Amen. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Because of Jesus Christ made you alive in the Spirit when you receive them. That makes you righteous because Jesus Christ was righteous. Amen. Amen. Yes. Jesus, we thank you for being a substitution for us on the cross over 2,000 years ago. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. We're talking about a resurrection power here to resurrect, to get you up out of the natural into the spirit. Amen. Dwell in you. He that raised up Christ 
from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. If the same spirit that was in Jesus Christ that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you as a believer, that same spirit is going to quicken your mortal body. And when you die and you go into the grave and you, when your body melts away, amen, and when the time of resurrection comes, that same power of Jesus will raise your mortal, your fleshly body that have been melted down and will raise it up into the supernatural realm and that will be re rejoicing time. Can I get someone to say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Praise, you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Praise God. We are in the, we got to understand this is real. We will not when we leave this world, you will come back as you when you were resurrected. You will not come back as an animal, insect, anything like that. But you will come back as you, a personal you. Amen. You will come back as personal I. Can I get an amen? You won't come back as a grasshopper, snake, or anything like that. Or a crocodile, or any other animal, or any other beast. You will come back, come back as you. Amen. Praise God. And people all got that all mixed up. They got to understand this. You, you talk to people, and you see, you hear all kinds of theories that they have about how they're going to come back. You hear all, you ask questions. You have all kinds of answers that you weren't even thinking about. They got all kinds of ways to, to phrase what they believe they will come back as. But we will come back as your person, as you. Who you are, you will be that person that will stand before God. Amen? Moving on. Praise God. That same spirit that quickened Jesus, that got his spirit up, amen, and resurrected him and took him into the glory land, abides in you when you are a believer. Look at verse 12 where we start. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh. We don't owe the flesh anything. We don't have to apologize how we move in the spirit as a true believer. We don't owe the flesh. How I many of you don't want to go back into the begging elements of the world again? We need to get a revelation from God for yourself to stay before God, to stay on your knees and pray and to stir to his word until God give you a revelation of how to deal with right now. How many of you know you need answers right now? You need a revelation. You don't need no resolution. Resolution ain't going to help you. Amen. Man can't help you, but God is the one that can help you. Amen. He can make his grace abound towards you. Amen. We need a re revelation from God, not a resolution. Because a lot of times people get in resolution, they get in groups. And they practice. And weight loss and all kind of errors they get into. You know, they said, we're going to stay physical fit all year. We're going to come out, man, we're going to be like soldiers in the army. We're going to be standing tall in our flesh. We're going to build up our biceps and triceps and all the muscles in our legs and our arms. We're going to look good this year, but we end up failing every time because it was of the flesh. Can I get an amen? Only what we do for Christ will work and will last. Amen. Praise God for that. We are not debtors to the flesh. We do not owe the flesh nothing, amen. But we do not let the flesh control our lives. Once we become G uh, saints and true believers of Jesus Christ, we do not let our flesh control us to tell us where to go and what to do. We need to be controlled by the Spirit of God. Can I get amen? amen. Praise him. We are not in debt to no flesh like we was when we was in the world. We was in debt to the flesh. We was in debt to the flesh, and our flesh was in debt to Satan. Satan controlled our flesh because we had not received Jesus yet. We was debt in our flesh, amen. But when we received Jesus Christ, we long, uh, no longer owe no debt or no explanation. We become to be what? Responsible beings. We are spiritual beings, but we come to be responsible when we accept Jesus. Amen. We need to get a revelation today. I need a revelation. I don't know about you. I need a revealing. I need revealing knowledge to my mind today. How many of you know your mind, your natural mind is contrary to the word of God? Lord, help me today. Can I get an amen? Someone ought to say, help me. I know I need it. My way of thinking, my theories, my opinions don't mean nothing in the eyesight of God. My opinions do not line up with this word. Can I get amen? amen. We're going to have to live by this word. We're going to have to live by this word. We're going to need this. We are not dead to the flesh to obey 
the operations of the flesh, the feelings of the flesh. We are not to get into the emotions of the flesh and our wills of the flesh and our intellects of the flesh. These are contrary to God's word. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We got to live by the spirit. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 13. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. That goes for people that have not received Jesus. You are dead in the spirit. You have not become alive yet until you receive Jesus Christ. I want you to get a revelation today and let you know that you need to receive Jesus Christ in your life as your personal Savior. If you're lost and haven't received him, you need to receive him today. Get a revelation of this. Amen. To reveal. I want God to reveal it to you. How many of you want God to reveal it to you? What you need. Amen. I mean, we are, a lot of us have needs. We haven't really prayed like we should and got to that throne like we should. Amen. And something we do and we just go around in circles. Sometimes. God allowed us to go around circles because we have not uh, learned to acknowledge the Lord in all, of, in all of our ways. Hey, so he can direct our what pathways. Amen. Praise God. For we, if we live after the flesh, we're going to die. We'll be dormant in our spirit. We will not be alive. We will not be quickened unless we have Jesus Christ on the inside. Praise him. Moving on down to the latter part of it, verse 13. But if we, through the Spirit, through the Spirit of God, through the Spirit of Jesus, which is the same, do mortify the deeds of the body to quicken it, to make alive the deeds of the body, you shall live. Because when you yield to the Spirit of God, let me tell you, you have the Spirit, soul, and body. When you yield to the Spirit of God as a true believer, that soul got the Father along with that Spirit. Can I get someone to say, Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Because if you yield totally to be a carnal Christian, then your spirit is carnal. Then your soul will follow the carnal status. Amen. But when you have the spirit of Jesus in control of your life, then your soul will have to follow the spirit of Jesus on the inside of you. Can I get an amen? amen. Praise God. Woo. That's something to make you want to shout a little bit this morning. Praise God. Yes, it's cold out there on the outside. But it's warm in here. I believe we have some have some windshield factors around negative 50 yep, yep. and of this sort this time of year. So we have to be really grafted in Jesus Christ and have the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of God's word. Amen. God will deal with us in the natural realm too to show us what we need to put on in this type of weather. And how many of you know if you don't put on the right clothing, you're going to freeze. Because this weather will give you frostbites. It will, it will, uh, your fingers, your toes, and your body cannot react to this cold weather. But we need that wisdom from God to help us today. We need to get a revelation from God. Not a resolution. Not a group therapist area where they come together in a group to, uh, and try to put their little minds together. Try to put their little bodies together and say, Lord, we can huddle, let's huddle up. What's your idea? What's your idea? What your idea? And all of them just scratching their heads. Sometimes don't know whose idea is correct. Can I get amen? A lot of people get together in a natural. They just go on through a form and a fashion. And don't get nothing done. How many of you have been in some meet meetings and, you, and they said they're going to get something done. They didn't get nothing. A meeting ended up being an argument. The discussion that they had ended up being blown out of proportion. Folks got upset, angry, because they was not in the spirit of God. Let me tell you, when you're in the spirit of God, there's no envy and strife. There's no hatred. Amen. When you're in the spirit of God, you let the spirit of God control you, and it will help you in every area of life, in every facet of life that you are in in this present time. Hallelujah. Praise God for the spirit of God. We were just singing. A song, burning me. Burn I want the fleshly ways to be burned out. Yes. And let the Holy Spirit be revealed and give me, and I need revelation knowledge today. Amen. I need something that's going to help me. Oh, I have went round and round in circles like the children of Israel. Some of them did. Went round and round in circles in some situations. How I many of you have been through some situations, circumstances, round and round, and you ain't found an answer yet? 
Hello, come on, someone. You've been around this ugly bun again. You've been around the same thing, and it's come back as though you put a yo-yo down. How many of you play with yo-yo? It come back to you. Or it boomerangs back to you. How many of you are sick and tired of? Sick and tired of these things boomeranging back to you or coming back. I need a revelation, not a resolution. I need God to reveal to me where I'm going wrong. At. How many of you know you can walk down the wrong pathway, but you need God to reveal to you where you're going wrong at? And that's go for non-believers and Christians all. We need to know which way we are going. You send the people that are sinners that have not received Jesus. The only way you can go is to receive Christ. You need to go that way, that road that may be narrow, but it don't lead to destruction. Let me tell you, that wide road will lead to destruction. Will cause you to go into eternal damnation when you don't receive Jesus Christ. It will cause you to go into eternal damnation, eternal hell, when you don't have Christ in you. Now, we are just showing you today how concerned we are about Every individual that may be watching this program on this television set, you may be somewhere today watching, but we want you to know that we love you in the name of Jesus, that we are warning you. How many of you love, love to be warned when you're heading the wrong way? If somebody would tell me about five miles down the road, there's a cliff, and I'm driving my car, and I don't know nothing about this place, and they tell you specifically what's getting ready to happen. If you go five more miles and don't turn off, you're going over that cliff. How many of you want to be warned about that? How many of you remember the story they said uh, it was a flood came up. A flood came up and flooded the whole area. This is just an example. And certain means of uh, rescue came their way to rescue them. Uh, in a boat, in an airplane, and all these things came. And they say, I'm still waiting on God. God, through the natural sense, sent every way to rescue this person. But they say, I'm still waiting on God. But what happened to that person? They ended up drowning because God, they didn't listen to God. God sent them all kind of ways to escape this destruction. How many of you want to dis escape destruction in this life? Because let me tell you, there is destruction coming to the United States. And I want to escape this because I want to rely on Jesus Christ as my source. I want to stay with Jesus Christ, my God and Savior. Yahshua Jesus, my God and Savior, the one that saved my soul, amen, from a eternal damnation. And I tell you today, people, we're wasting our time if we don't have Jesus. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how good a family structure you think you got. How things look so good and, and you're going like you got no worries. But let me tell you, there's a time coming. You must come, you're going to come to a point in time, you're going to need a savior. This is a time. He's coming soon. He wants us to get a revelation of that. Now, you can remember in, this, in the four Gospels, when the re disciples didn't even believe that Jesus was going to die and was going to be resurrected. They didn't believe it. That's right. That's right. He told them That's right. what's going to happen. He told them that he's going to be whipped and put in the hands of sin for man. Yeah. And the mean Roman soldiers are going to do that, but they still did not believe it. That's right. We're in a time now where men don't believe that God's word is true. A lot of men said, you guys are just going through a form and a fashion. This is true. They're saying that this is counterfeit. A lot of men, people out there, you run into, will say, this is not true. And a lot of them said, Jesus did not come and die for the sins of the world, but he already came. That's one time. But he coming in a second chance. It's second time coming. This is the last time for people to, un to get this stuff together because let me tell you, Jesus Christ, when he come, you won't have no way to escape. We know there's a tribulation period coming too. But I'm taking my, I'm taking my chance right now to receive him now. I'm not going to wait. I'm getting my revelation right now. I'm not going to wait on someone else's theory, 
some other man trying to tell me how to go about receiving Jesus. I'm going to receive Jesus for myself. What if Jesus was saying, I'm not going to die for the sins of the world? He could have been selfish, but Jesus was not selfish. He gave up himself as though he was a sacrificial lamb. He gave himself up for he was slain from the foundations of the world. And I'm going to tell you, there, was, there will be no more perfect sacrifices. Jesus Christ was the last perfect sacrifice. You can go get any priest down here on earth. Excuse me. You can go get any Catholic priest. Call them Father whoever. There's only one priest. The great priest. The great high priest that passed into the heavens. You can go to this Father. Take your sins to him. It ain't going to get you salvation. You got to go through Jesus Christ. Yeah, I had an example in my mind. I'm going to say it. I'm gonna, this is probably another part of the message next time. Pretend there's a large building with about, I'll say, eight to ten doors in it. And nine out of ten of those doors, one of them is unlocked, but the rest of them is locked. And pretend this is right here. When you get this inside this big building, there's God is in there. God is in this big building, right? And you go try and get through every one of those nine doors, but there's only one door unlocked. What did Jesus say? He said, I'm the door. You go knocking on all these doors, and you, nobody will answer you. You go through all the other religions. All these religions, they can't, cannot let you into the kingdom of heaven. You're knocking on doors. And we got that right now where men are going around trying to find some other way to get to Jesus Christ. John 14, 6 says there's no other way. He said, I'm the way. I'm the truth and the life. No man will come to the Father but through Jesus Christ. They go around all these other religious forms and fashions. But not going through the true gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ. You have to go through Jesus Christ. Now, if you, you enter to that door, that one door, through Jesus, then you can be born again. But you can go with all the other doors. You can't get into them. But if you go through the door where Jesus said, I am the door, by him, no other man can go through, but through Jesus Christ. Amen. That was just an example that came to my mind. And that was a good one because I thought about it. I said, oh, people are going all the other ways trying to get to Christ. I mean, other religions will tell you anything. Just to, to, A lot of them just, excuse my, a lot of them just want to keep you in there because they, they, don't, they, they don't feel comfortable unless they got plenty of people in there. But the scripture said, what? Well, two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst of you. All, it ain't always in the big crowd. It could be in the small number. I'm telling you, I'll take Jesus Christ wherever I can. I can be in the white house. I can be in a black house. I can be in a blue house or red house. But let me tell you, I'll take Jesus Christ. How many of you take him anywhere you go? Amen. I don't care if I'm standing before the president, the government, or whoever, but I receive Jesus Christ. I'm getting the revelation to you. Let you see the revelation. The only way is through Jesus Christ. Don't be ashamed to receive Jesus. Right. He's the only way that you're going to make it to heaven. Woo. I don't care where we go. Right. You can go over to the eastern countries and all over. Yep. You can go in Germany, anywhere. But you're going to still have to come back to the same answer. That Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Let's move on down just to couple of scriptures before we close here. Praise God. Look at verse. Let me read 13 quickly right through it. And then we'll go 14. For if we live out of the flesh, we shall die. But if we through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Look at verse 14 as we close. For as many as led, and, excuse me, for as many as are led. 
by the Spirit of God. Amen. They are the sons, plural, more than one, sons of God. For I would have it no other way. I'd rather be led by God's Spirit. Because let me tell you, he won't lead you the wrong way. He won't lead you to fall into a ditch of destruction. Right. He will not deceive you and de have you in deception to fool you and bring trickery to you to trick you in. But he is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. And no man will come unto the Father but through him. You live by the Spirit. You are sons of God. Go over to Galatians, the fifth chapter. The 16th verse. Get a revelation, something that will help you in this life. Praise God. Let's read verse 16. Galatians 5th chapter. This I say then, walk in the spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Praise God for that. This I say, walk in the spirit. How many of you know there's a war going on? On the inside of you every day, every second. There's a war going on. The flesh always wants to overthrow the spirit. Your selfishness, your self-efforts always want to overrule the spirit of God. Amen. Can I get amen? amen? But we need to yield to God's spirit through his word in order to defeat this flesh. We need to yield to God's spirit to break the flesh under the subjection of the power of God. Amen. Praise God. We want the Holy Spirit to keep us from being devoured from the flesh. A Christian only have victory through the Spirit of God. A Christian only have victory through living by the Spirit and walking in the Spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust, because the flesh lusted against the spirit, it wars against the spirit, so you will not do what God tells you to do. Amen. Look at verse 17. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. That's the warfare going on here. And these are contrary the one to the other. We need a revelation of this. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. These flesh will get in the way of the movement of the Spirit of God. The flesh will get in the way and cause a corruptness. The way the Spirit of God wants to go in your life. When you yield to your flesh the way it stops the movement of God. And a person had to be geared up in God in order to understand this. They must come to knowledge, Lord, forgive me for allowing my flesh to be in total warfare and to defeat the spirit. But that should be opposite. We should be letting the spirit of God dwell in us in richly in such a way that it can defeat the flesh and put the flesh back in line because the flesh want to do it its own way. That's every day we got to fight. Yeah. How many you know that's every day? That's not just one day. Every day you're going to have a new fight. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, PO Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.